Hi, my name is Ilma and welcome to my channel. Today uh, I like to share 1 Corinthians 10 verses 23 to 30. I've been posting Christian blogs for nine years now, so I hope uh, that you are blessed with this uh, blog. And here's the Word of God. All things are permitted, but not all things are of benefit. All things are permitted, but not all things build people up. No one is to seek his own advantage, but rather that of his neighbor. Eat anything that is sold in a meat market without asking questions for the sake of conscience. For the earth is the Lord's and all it contains. If one of unbelievers invites you and you want to go, Eat anything that is set before you without asking questions for the sake of conscience. But if anyone says to you, this, this is meat sacrifice to idols, do not eat it for the sake of the one who informed you and for the sake of conscience. Now by conscience, I do not mean your own, but the other person's. For why is my freedom judged by another's conscience? If I partake with thankfulness, why am I slandered about that for which I give thanks? 1 Corinthians 10, 23-30 And here's my blog. Seek not your own advantage. In this letter, Paul teaches us the principle of selflessness and of discerning what things build up others. In verse 23, he says that although we are given freedom with so much things, we are to exercise caution as to which ones are beneficial to building up others. In verse 24, he shares the secret to peace, not to seek one's own gain, but to build others up. Sadly, many of us goes to our default setting of self-seeking tendency Paul is full of the Holy Spirit in how he explains God's will for his people. He wants them to set aside all self-seeking acts. Instead, he, give, he advises the Corinthian believers to seek the advantage of others. Why is this teaching very important in a believer's life? It leads us to think less of ourselves and more of others. It starves the desires of the flesh and follows the leading of the Spirit. The Spirit of God wants us to love others and show them mercy. The flesh wants to satisfy its own desires and lusts. In verse 25, he talks about the importance of letting go of rules and legalism. The Jews followed so much rules and prohibited so many things. In this verse, he is challenging the believers to exercise freedom for the sake of conscience. What happens when we focus so much on the rules? We get trapped in guilt and fear. Then in verse 26, he reminds the believers that God owns all things. So there is no need to fear what to do and what not to do in case unbelievers engage them into sharing their meals with them. What Paul is teaching here is the principle of acceptance and letting go of rules so that they can bring Christ in their midst. Reflection. How is seeking your own advantage against God's law of love? Well, you know the Ten Commandments, I'm sure, if you're a believer for quite a while. But uh, the Ten Commandments is summed up by Christ, too, in Matthew, that says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul with all your mind with all your strength and the next one is like it it says love your neighbor as yourself it did not say love yourself as your neighbor it says love your neighbor as yourself in other words our default setting is already selfish God doesn't need to tell us to love ourselves because we already have that in our DNA. So when the God's law of love is focused on love, because in John, 
John says that God is love. Therefore, those who knows God knows love or loves people or loves God. So if you wonder why people are unloving, and look at their lives. If they are unloving, there must be something that they do not know about God. Because once God reveals himself to someone, they know how to love because God is love. So, when we seek our own advantage, it is not loving God because it says, that's why, why would God give a command to love him if he, we already do that, uh, that's already our default setting. Because our default setting is we love ourselves so much. So that's why he says, make me first, love me first, and then love others as you would love yourself. So in other words, because our default setting is already, we love ourselves so much. So that is effortless already for us. We need to abide in Christ for us to be able to love him first and make him first in our life and then we will then have the grace to love others as we would love ourselves so that's really a divine um, act it's not on us but it's God doing all this changing in our hearts so that we will not always go to our default setting which is about always about ourselves. So thanks for watching. I hope you check my website at ilmaars.com for artworks, photographs, and a copy of this blog. And uh, I pray that you subscribe to my channel on YouTube so I could make more videos to bless your heart so that you can be led to the Word of God, which uh, frees us from all kinds of sin, from all kinds of deception, from all kinds of um, wrong thinking. Thanks for watching. God loves you, and so do I. <clears throat>